today we are talking about uh, the frontal lobe dysfunction, uh, executive def uh, the, the, the deficit across a variety of neurological and psychiatric conditions. And uh, the, whereas our webinar last week was, m m you know, more conceptual, more I introduced a few uh, uh, kind of a new concepts, new ideas. Today it will be more factual, more matter of fact. Uh, the, we'll be just reviewing some factual information. Uh, so, uh, contrary to what people used to believe until maybe even this, the, the second third of the 20th century, that the prefrontal cortex is sort of useless and is not involved in any disorder and can be mutilated through uh, the, uh, the neurosurgical and otherwise with relative impunity, uh, the contrary to this uh, of the, of the outdated belief, today we know that the opposite is in the, in the case, that the prefrontal cortex is exceptionally vulnerable, frontal lobes are exceptionally vulnerable across a very wide range of conditions, okay? And uh, uh, this vulnerability may be a result of kind of a several facts. First of all, uh, the, uh, uh, many of you may have heard of Hewlett Jackson, this great British neurologist of the 19th century neurologist, who formulated this law of evolution and dissolution, uh, stating, positing that the structures which are the last to develop in evolution are also the most vulnerable ones and are the first to go at the, at the, uh, as a result of various uh, uh, assaults on the nervous system. Uh, the, the other possibility, and these are not mutually exclusive explanations, is that as we discussed last time, the prefrontal cortex is exceptionally strongly connected with everything else in the brain. In, in that it, it's unique, it's more extensively and densely interconnected with every other system in the brain than any other cerebral structure, which of course is precisely what enables it to serve the function of the chief executive officer, so to speak, for the rest of the brain and sort of organize the functions of uh, disparate functions of other brain structures into coherent behaviors. But the flip side is that of this uh, the exquisite connectivity. The flip side is that the prefrontal cortex is also the point of summation of a distributed lesion. So if there is a, a, a diffuse brain damage, uh, the, it may affect the prefrontal cortex more than it will affect other parts of the brain, and we'll talk about it later today, all right? Uh, now, and here is a list of disorders uh, the, uh, uh, which are the, the characterized by executive deficit, and I don't even purport uh, uh, to claim that this is an exhaustive uh, list of disorders, but a representative one. And we will uh, discuss today most of them. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, so, uh, the executive deficit uh, the, is maybe common in certain cerebrovascular disorders, in schizophrenia, in affective disorders, in depression, in bipolar disorder, in Tourette's and in obsessive compulsive disorder, in traumatic brain injury, in various forms of dementia, and we will talk about each of them separately later today, in Parkinson's disease, in Huntington's disease, in multiple sclerosis, in attention deficit disorder, in nonverbal learning disability, and in autism, all right? So, uh, uh, so in effect, uh, uh, executive deficit is to be expected in, uh, in, uh, in an exceptionally wide range of disorders. And in that sense, again, it's a reflection of this particular vulnerability of the prefrontal cortex. Now, uh, this slide is from a very old paper of mine where basically I was making the point that I just made. Uh, the, uh, 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 <coughs> that the, uh, the listing various conditions uh, the characterized by uh, uh, the prefrontal abnormality and listing both various physiological sources of evidence to this effect and neuropsychological sources of evidence and, uh, and uh, the, the and various articles uh, the documenting this vulnerability of the prefrontal cortex. And it's a very old article. It was published uh, more than 20 years ago. So the only reason I am bringing it up here is because of one particular study, and this is the study by Oza Lidlja, the one I am outlining with my cursor on the screen right now. It's uh, uh, a study uh, conducted at University of Lund in Sweden, and it was published in the same issue uh, of, of this journal, Neuropsychiatry. Neuropsychiatry.